Hello everyone and uh, welcome back. Uh, today's lesson will be on metamorphic rocks. If you recall, uh, we talked about three, three uh, major classes of rocks. Uh, one was uh, volcanic rock, then we uh, talked about uh, sedimentary rocks and uh, today we are going to wrap up uh, the discussion on uh, rocks by talking about the origin and uh, yeah, origin engineering issues and uses involved with involving uh, metamorphic rock uh, rock masses and metamorphic rock terrains. Okay, before we get on with today's uh, lesson, we are going to look at the questions that were given to you as part of the previous lesson. Uh, these are the questions. The first one was that with increased temperature, pressure and pH, formation of limestone is accelerated or impeded. Okay, now, in order to understand that, we have to consider the chemical reactions involved in the formation of limestone. Uh, the basic chemical reactions are like this. Let's let's consider a solution, aqueous solution of calcium carbonate. Uh, how that actually changes? So we started with aqueous solution of calcium carbonate, and that is going to be reacted upon uh, by. We have got another mistake here. Uh, that is going to be reacted upon by uh, carbonic acid and then what we are going to end up with in this process is release of uh, calcium ion and uh, this another ion. Both of these things are going to be in aqueous phase again. Now, this carbonic acid actually is going to come from dissolution of carbon dioxide in water and the reaction involved in that process goes like this. So, this carbonic acid ends up uh, acting, uh, reacting with the uh, with the calcium carbonate. Uh, now, what happens actually? Let's consider the the, the let's consider reaction two. Let's consider reaction two. I mean, how reaction two the forward uh, forward uh, rate of the of reaction two is actually accentuated. And then we'll look at what is the what is the impact of that particular uh, rate on the uh, precipitation or dissolution of calcium carbonate. Now, the forward reaction of of uh, dissolution of carbon dioxide in water and formation of carbonic acid that is actually accentuated by decrease decrease in uh, in temperature so if temperature goes down then the forward reaction is actually accentuated then if pressure goes up then more and more carbon dioxide gets dissolved in uh, in uh, water 
and that leads to the formation of more and more carbonic acid. So, these are the two factors that leads to increased dissolution of CO2 and thereby increased H2CO3 formation. Now, since H2CO3 formation is going to actually trigger the forward reaction of dissolution of calcium carbonate. The forward reaction of, of uh, chemical reaction 1 also is going to be uh, accentuated, catalyzed by this particular process. So, this will also lead, will lead to an increase in the rate of dissolution of calcium carbonate. And the reverse is true if uh, if we uh, in other and the reverse is also true. In other words, if we actually impede generation of carbonic acid by increase of temperature or decrease of pressure, then that is going to lead to the precipitation of calcium carbonate. So, what is going to happen then is if we actually increase temperature and decrease pressure, then we are going to get more and more limestone. Uh, and if we reverse these two influencing factors, then limestone is going to get dissolved in carbonic acid. Now, we also talked about pH. Now, you notice that the reaction, the forward reaction actually the forward reaction of uh, chemical reaction 1 actually that is uh, that the rate of that increases as the pH goes down. So, if we actually increase pH then that also is going to catalyze uh, precipitation of limestone. So, basically these are the uh, major factors that affect the precipitation of uh, limestone or cal calcite mineral uh, in the form of limestone. And the second question that I asked was sea water is considered to be a necessary ingredient in dolomite formation. Uh, why that is so? Now, for to understand that again we have to look at the chemical process involved in form in the formation of dolomite. Now, what happens there is this we have got one reaction in which uh, we end up in uh, dissolution of calcium carbonate like what we had before and then what happens is this. So, this one here is your dolomite and basically these chemical reactions are uh, clubbed together and are given the name dolomitization.
Now, the forward reaction for the for chemical reaction 2 forward reaction forward rate of 2 is catalyzed by a few factors. Uh, the major ones are elevated uh, availability of magnesium as opposed to calcium uh, ions. then elevated temperature as well and uh, and calcium actually availability of calcium carbonate in the aragonite form rather than in the calcite form which we actually looked at earlier. In other actually what I am trying to say here is calcite and aragonite they are polymorphs. So, what we need in the uh, in the uh, in order to catalyze the formation of dolomite is availability of aragonite rather than calcite. Now, all these things particularly this one is uh, is met when sea water gets mixed up with uh, fresh water fresh ground water and the magnet and and sea water itself acts as a source of magnesium ions so that is the reason why presence of sea water actually is considered a necessary ingredient for the formation of dolomite Okay, reverting back to the third question, I asked to explain. I asked you to explain the terms ripple marks and gradational bedding, and this also where these things were discussed in the last lesson itself. So ripple marks are the relict forms of wave actions. That, can, that are readily visible in the texture of sedimentary rock as is shown in the in this sketch here. So, this is the appearance of ripple marks in a sedimentary rock structure. Gradational bedding on the other hand is going to be like this. Uh, you imagine that sedimentary rocks are often uh, bedded uh, in this form and each of these beds are going to be uh, going to be going to be going to become finer upward or finer downward as far as the particle size of the composing mineral grains are concerned. So, in this case what I have shown is that the particle size is decreasing as you move upward and the same kind of feature is going to be repeated in other beds as well. So, this is called a gradational bedding. Okay.
all right so that kind of takes care of all the questions that were given to you in the previous class and now we hop on to today's lesson so what we are going to learn from this particular lesson we are going to look at the agents of metamorphism the basic uh, causes that leads that lead to the development of metamorphic rocks then we are going to we are going to classify uh, metamorphic rocks look at the grades of metamorphic rocks and we are going to consider basic engineering issues that are involved with uh, with uh, with metamorphic rocks and economic uses of metamorphic rocks okay what is meant by metamorphic rock that is the first question that comes into mind metamorph uh, metamorphosis you know you you may have uh, encountered this uh, term elsewhere and what is meant by that is a process of change now here what happens uh, is uh, what is meant by metamorphic rock is those it, it's, it essentially signifies the fact that these rocks develop by changing of pre-existing rocks these pre-existing rocks are often called protoliths and they could be composed of sedimentary or igneous parent rocks or in other or, or in fact they could be even metamorphic rocks pre-existing metamorphic rocks what what causes metamorphism metamorphism can be triggered typically by increased pressure temperature and fluid action we will see as uh, we will see the details of these things as we continue with this uh, presentation now the effect of metamorphism leads to textural and mineralogical changes of the composition of the rock although in some cases what is going to happen you will see that the relict forms of the pre-existing rock is some is uh, maintained so metamorphic rocks then originate from the uh, from uh, from the action of different agents of metamorphism on pre-existing rocks of primarily all the three varieties uh, i.e. Uh, igneous rocks sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks so what are the agents that trigger metamorphism the first one is temperature change and what is important here is the temperature gradient because you can imagine that as you go down deeper uh, from the surface of the earth then the temperature actually increases uh, at, at a rate of approximately 35 degrees Celsius per kilometer depth so with deep burial a pre-existing rock mass deep burial because of something because of tectonic activity or because of mountain building or because of any other uh, geologic process uh, the pre-existing rock mass is going to be subjected to an elevated level of temperature magma intrusion intrusion of uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, partially molten rock forming materials that also is going to elevate the temperature of the rock uh, within the rock that surrounds the intruding magma then another agent that actually triggers metamorphism is pressure change the as as it happened we in case of temperature with burial pre-existing rock will be subjected to an elevated uh, level of pressure because it has to withstand the pressure of the rock or other materials that actually comes on top of it uh, pressure change could also be directional and this particular 
situation happens when uh, in the continental margin where one particular uh, tectonic plate uh, collides with another plate and as a result there are several different uh, several different regimes of compressional and tension uh, tensile uh, stresses develop in the lateral direction then chemical change could also be an agent of metamorphism and chemical change is often triggered by the temperature change and pressure change or it could be uh, because of dissolution uh, dissolution in uh, of 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 rock minerals okay now second thing what is important here is the grades of metamorphism how do we classify grades of metamorphism now in order to understand that what we need to understand is what basically happens because of metamorphism now primarily what happens uh, in because of metamorphism is the minerals within the pre existing rock if they are hydrous minerals they are going to lose increasing proportion of uh, of water within the mineral structure and also they are going to lose ga gases such as carbon dioxide so basically metamorphism involves reduction of uh, of hydrous minerals mineral percentage within the rock mass and also there will be reduction of carbon dioxide within the mineral uh, within the mineral structure so that actually leads to the change of uh, it actually changes the one mineral to another now these two processes are triggered by increases primarily by increases of temperature and pressure so as the process matures in order to match in order to have a mature uh, metamorphic process we need to elevate the temperature as well as we need to elevate the pressure so this particular chart here shows uh, a plot where we look where we look at different uh, metamorphic grades so when there is no when there is not much of change of temperature and pressure the processes involved in that case is diagenesis we know what is meant by that term uh, from our previous presentations and then we get into the zone where what is what is known as low grade metamorphism uh, which actually takes place uh, in the temperature range maybe 200 to 300 degrees celsius and uh, pressure range of between uh, 300 megapascals to about 600 megapascals if we increase the temperature further and or, or increase the pressure further then we get into intermediate grade of uh, metamorphic rocks and the temperature range for that is between 300 and 500 degrees celsius typically and the pressure at which intermediate uh, metamorphic rocks develop that actually varies typically between 600 and about 1000 megapascals if the temperature and pressure increases further then we are going to get high grade metamorphic rocks and these rocks are going to be uh, going to contain least percentage of hydrous minerals such as different varieties of mica uh, and the zone the ranges of temperature and pressure for high grade metamorphism is shown on the plot there it the temperature could vary anywhere between say 500 and uh, say typically 800 to 900 degree celsius and the pressure range is typically more than 1000 megapascals and if you increase the temperature further and or, or increase the pressure further you are going to end up with melting the uh, rock mineral partially so what is happening here on this chart is that as we 
go down from top left to bottom right, we are losing more and more uh, hydrous minerals. And we are going to also lose gases such as carbon dioxide. So, these are the two major features of these processes. And also, we will see later that in this particular direction, we will start typically from clay minerals. There may be some quartz and other uh, stable uh, minerals also uh, in the in the uh, in the rocks that we begin with, but these clay minerals actually are going to be uh, going to evolve into chlorides. Then we are going to start getting more and more micas, and then we are going to start getting more and more uh, other mo uh, there will be quartz actually in quartz and feldspar in all the cases feldspars and uh, here also we will get quartz and feldspars and we will get more and more uh, other, more and more minerals of other varieties as we proceed to the bottom right such as we are going to uh, start getting amphiboles and pyroxenes. as we move down uh, to the right. Okay, so, that actually in a nutshell uh, gives you the uh, what is meant by grades of metamorphism. All right. Now, there are different types of metamorphic uh, rocks or metamorphism the process of metamorphism depending on what are the depending on what factor triggers the process. Uh, there will be several different uh, types of metamorphism and those are listed here. The first one is called contact metamorphism. In this case metamorphism is triggered by an intruding uh, mass of molten magma. Then we can have regional metamorphism and this particular type of metamorphism is triggered by a large scale geologic process such as uh, tectonic collision or other types of uh, tectonic activities, mountain building process and so on and so forth. Uh, the third type of metamorphism is called cataclystic, cataclastic metamorphism and this type of metamorphism is triggered within the near the vicinity of a fault. We know what is meant by fault from one of the earlier presentations. Uh, and also there are other other types of more rare forms of metamorphism such as hydrothermal metamorphism. Uh, actually I, I would not call hydrothermal metamorphism as a rare one, but uh, this is actually triggered uh, near the divergent boundaries. We will see actually what is meant by divergent boundaries when we uh, get into plate tectonics later on. Uh, these are essentially undersea vents from which uh, from which uh, molten uh, magma comes to the surface near at the sea floor uh, leading to the formation of basalts, basaltic rocks. Uh, hydrothermal metamorphism is triggered basically by convecting uh, water at elevated temperature near surface actually. And finally, we could also trigger metamorphism because of very heavy impact such as those encountered during the uh, 
impact of meteorites. Uh, so, what I wanted to suggest here is that this one, this type of metamorphism is quite rare. Whereas, these two are relatively rare and these two are quite widespread actually, relatively speaking. What, what we will we will get into the details of each one of these things uh, in the in the next little bit and we will start with contact metamorphism. So, what drives contact metamorphism? Contact metamorphism is driven by the uh, by the fa is, is uh, triggered by the fact that a large mass of molten magma intrudes into pre existing rock mass that could be sedimentary rock or that could be uh, other types of chemically formed rocks or uh, uh, or uh, or volcanic rock or all kinds of rocks in, in those if it is intruded by uh, molten magma then what happens the rock mass that surrounds the molten magma is going to be subjected to elevated level of temperature not so, not so much an increased pressure uh, and that temperature gradient actually triggers chemical changes. Uh, chemical and mineralogical changes and that is the cause of contact metamorphism. These things, this type of metamorphism typically takes place at shallow depths because at shallow depths only you are going to get a large uh, temperature gradient. Uh, what, what we mean by temperature gradient is that the uh, rate of change of temperature spatially as we move from the surface of the intruding uh, magma to the uh, surrounding rock away from the intruding magma. Now, uh, what happens actually as we go to deeper layers then the surrounding rock around intruding magma is going to be also at an elevated temperature as a result uh, we are going to have a larger uh, we are going to have a larger rock mass around the intruding magma at a at a uh, at a relatively larger temperature and the gradient temperature gradient as a result is going to decrease quite a bit as we go down deeper uh, now what we also have what we also have in this case is the pressure gradient is relatively small and as a result this particular type of uh, metamorphism gives rise to rocks that are not foliated or layered. What we mean by foliation is uh, essentially the, the foliated rocks they are composed of layered uh, composed of uh, interlayered structure as we will see in the next little bit. Now, there are a couple of definitions in this connection. The intruding rock mass, uh, the, 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 ro the rock that surrounds the intruding rock mass where metamorphism is taking place that particular, uh, that particular layer around the intruding magma is called uh, aureole. And examples of rocks that arise because of contact metamorphism include hornfels primarily and you could also get quartzite and marble. Now, we want to have a look at different grades of uh, contact metamorphism and as we have stated as we have learnt earlier that pressure increase in this case is going to be relatively modest. So, we are going to look at uh, we are going to look at depths typically less than uh, 10 kilometers 
and pressures typically less than say 300 MPa. Uh, and in this case, we are considering the grades of metamorphism that arises because of metamorphism of pelitic, quartz feldspar and mafic rocks. Uh, the term pelitic is new to you actually and what is meant by that is rocks that are composed of clay primarily of clay minerals that actually uh, arises from diagenesis and cementation of, uh, of, of clay layer, layers of clay. Uh, examples of this type of rock includes uh, clay stone, shale and so on and so forth uh, and slates also. Uh, although slate is a slate is a little bit uh, further down on the grade of metamorphism compared to shale rock. Now we can see the different types of uh, metamorphism, different types of metamorphic rock that arises because of contact metamorphism, and that is shown here on this particular chart. This is actually a section of the plot that we have already seen. Uh, and here uh, what we are interested is the range shown as a uh, range that is shown as, uh, as yellow shade. So, what we are looking at is this particular area, uh, this particular area, this particular range of uh, pressure and temperature and here as is evident we begin typically from uh, from rocks that contain a large proportion of clay minerals then we move on to uh, to the to the to a particular class of rock which is known as the albite epidote hornfell faeces uh, which is to the left which is near the left end of the range of pressure temperature that we are considering here that contains predominantly albite, mineral, quartz, chloride and calcite. Then we move on to the Hornfell, Hornblend Hornfels species. In this case we have got primarily chloride, uh, we have got primarily quartz, plagioclase, muscovite and biotite mica and calcite. And what should, what you should notice here is that from these faeces, chloride and epidote uh, uh, minerals are going to be absent, absent typically. And then as the uh, grades of metamorphic rock becomes higher, then we are going to get into pyroxene hornfels which contain a large proportion of pyroxene minerals. Uh, what you are going to get here is absence of muscovite, hornblende and calcite and finally at the highest grade where we are very near to the intruding, uh, intruding magma, you end up with a class of rock which is called sanidinite faeces and here you are going to have a total absence of hydrous minerals such as micas and uh, abundance of pyroxene minerals. In other words, you, you must have noticed if you recall from uh, what we have uh, said when we were, when we were talking about uh, chemical, uh, chemical, uh, chemical composition of silicate minerals, uh, the pyroxene minerals are essentially single chain minerals. So, as the grade of metamorphism matures, what we are getting is a reduction of the proportion of hydrous minerals, a reduction of double chain minerals and an increase of single chain minerals. So that is the major process that you should take a notice here. Now, uh, contact metamorphism also leads to the formation of another type of uh, 
another class of metamorphic rocks which originate when magma intrudes into pre-existing carbonate rocks such as limestone and dolostone. Now, the type of terrain that actually develops in this process is called scarns. Now, here what happens this particular uh, in this particular case we start from calcite brucite minerals. Uh, if you recall what is meant by brucite from your chemistry class or uh, from from the discussion what we have uh, what you may already know actually this one. So, what we mean by brucite is essentially uh, this particular chemical. Uh, so, here we start with calcite brucite, calcite as you know already that it is uh, simply calcium carbonate and then at the at the low grade lowest grade of metamorphism we get marbles in this case essentially calcite uh, this is this arises because of recrystallization of calcite and brucite and then we as the metamorphic grade increases then we will get uh, we will get minerals such as sparite calcite is also present then we will end up with minerals that has a larger proportion of uh, pyroxene minerals such as diopside. So, essentially what and, and finally as the grade as the metamorphism matures even more then we are going to get garnets and uh, garnets and quartz to an increasing extent. And here also you should you should know that as the metamorphic grade increases then we also get more and more uh, more and more uh, mineral ores such as ores of uh, gold and uh, ilmenite, tungsten and so on and so forth. So, the the rock the metamorphic rock faeces which is near the contact of the intruding magma and the surrounding pre existing rock are rich are often rich sources of those kind of uh, those kind of mineral ores and we will see this thing uh, later on as we continue with this particular presentation. Okay, the second type of metamorphism that we want to consider is regional metamorphism. So, as I mentioned earlier that this particular uh, type of metamorphism takes place because of large geological processes such as near subduction zones or mountain buildings and examples of rocks metamorphic rocks that arise because of regional metamorphism uh, includes schists. The formation temperature in this case is between 100 and 300 degrees Celsius typically and formation pressure is typically between 300 and 800 MPa. Amphibolite at a larger temperature 300 to 600 degree Celsius uh, 200 to 900 MPa pressure. Uh, these things actually contain double chain silicate minerals and uh, eclogite at much higher temperature and pressure as is indicated at the bottom of this slide here 200 to 700 degree Celsius and pressure of 900 to 1200 MPa and these things this particular class of rock is uh, rich in pyroxene minerals. And also another thing you should uh, you should notice in this case is that as you go down uh, as the as actually the grade of metamorphism increases uh, the the grain size the granularity of these rocks also increase granularity increases with grades of metamorphism in this case. 
Okay. Now, these are this particular cartoon actually shows the grades of uh, metam different different metamorphic rocks uh, that we already have discussed. So, we begin uh, with the pelatic rocks such as shales and then we move on to phyllite, schist and gneiss with, uh, with increased grade of metamorphism and the chemical changes as we have already discussed involves uh, change of clay minerals first into biotite then uh, double chain uh, double chain silicates quartz and feldspar and finally what happens actually because of because of directional uh, directional pressure directional pressure in this case and that is a very major difference between regional metamorphism and contact metamorphism uh, this particular type of metamorphism involves application of directional pressure and that directional pressure application leads to the segregation of mafic and felsic minerals leading often to uh, a foliated structure uh, like what is seen on the pictures of phyllite, schist and gneiss. All of them are examples really of foliated rocks or uh, which involves uh, wh which is actually a composition of plate like entities. So, this particular type of structure develops because of application of directional uh, directional application of pressure and this particular aspect was absent when we were discussing uh, contact metamorphism. So, contact metamorphic rocks they do not uh, show typically foliated structure whereas, rocks that arise out of regional metamorphism processes uh, show often uh, foliated structures. The second the, 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 the other type of metamorphism is cataclastic metamorphism. This particular type of metamorphism occur near the fault zones and that is because of the deformation uh, breakage uh, because of friction and welding because of elevated heat that is generated because of the movement of fault. The processes involved here includes heat and pulverization of the rock mass pre existing rocks that are very near the fault zone and the two examples uh, the two, uh, two best examples perhaps of uh, rocks that arise because of cataclastic metamorphism include uh, myelonite and fault breccia. Now, you should uh, there is a there is a fundamental difference uh, in the environment in which myelonites and fault breccia arise uh, and that has something to do with the depth at which the fault movement is taking place depth below the surface. So, at greater depths the rocks are at elevated temperature and they behave in a much more ductile manner and in this case the type of metamorphic rock that arises is myelonite uh, whereas, fault breccia is typical of uh, brittle failure of the rock masses around the fault zone and this includes uh, clusters of previous previously previously existing rock masses around the fault and they often times get welded because of heat and that leads to the development of fault breccia. Then uh, the other type of uh, the, the next class of metamorphism is hydrothermal metamorphism and this is really because of the interaction between the rock and hot water and a very good source of hot water is near mid oceanic ridges and those hot waters uh, near hydrothermal vents they are called they are rich in many uh, different types of minerals that come out uh, from deep underground and these this type of metamorphism is common in case of basaltic rocks uh, which lack hydrous minerals and an example of this class of metamorphism is the, the uh, an example of this type uh, the type of rock that develops uh, from this type of metamorphism is soapstone 
which involves the uh, chemical change of pyroxene mineral to talc mineral and also uh, zeolite rocks they also uh, to a large extent develop from hydrothermal metamorphism. Shock metamorphism on the other hand is caused uh, when tremendous increase of temp pressure takes place not so much of increase of temperature tremendous increase of pressure results because say of meteorite, meteorite impact or volcanic eruption and the pressure that you are looking at is very very high on the order of 2400 MPa and in this if that happens then exotic uh, rock minerals actually develop they are not very widely uh, they do not occur very widely on the surface of the earth uh, because they are unstable at ambient temperature pressure conditions examples of that is tishovite uh, which is actually a, a stishovite and quasite they are both polymorphs of quartz uh, if you re, all of them has got the chemical formula of SiO2 uh, all of them have got chemical formula of SiO2 uh, so so SiO2 is the chemical formula of quartz stishovite and uh, and uh, quasite but you can see that the crystal structure of these three types of minerals are quite different from each other. Okay. Now textures of sedimentary rocks. So we have already mentioned that sedimentary rocks could be foliated or non foliated, foliated if they actually uh, have got layered structure and otherwise they are called non foliated. Now there are different types of foliated structure like slaty, uh, slaty is typically uh, what is meant by that is it, it is composed of uh, it has got slate like uh, slate like layers which are quite slippery when you uh, slippery and soapy appearance or soapy feel then you have got phyllitic uh, texture, schistose texture and nisic texture. So what happens in this case actually is the grain size, grain size increases and also the layer thickness. or the foliation thickness increases. Uh, typical grain sizes that are uh, connected with these different types of textures are uh, ind were indicated when we were talking about the textures of uh, regional metam or, or grades of regional metamorphism. So you should refer back to that particular slide. Uh, to get a feel for what kind of grain sizes and layer thicknesses we are looking at. Non foliated uh, rocks on the other hand will not, uh, will not exhibit any layered structure and examples of this type of rocks are uh, limestone uh, and granulite. Okay. So this actually explains what is meant by foliated log uh, rocks. Uh, which we have already uh, discussed uh, the texture is layered or foliated and minerals have got a preferred orientation and this arises because of directional stress application and we have seen that examples include slate and schist. Non foliated rocks on the other hand we have seen that already that forms by recrystallization of pre existing uh, rock. Uh, examples include marble and quartzite in this case uh, you have got typically a structure that is composed of interlocked mineral uh, grains uh, how do you name uh, different types of uh, different types of uh, different types of ro metamorphic rocks so is, is explained here 
textual classification could be of three different we could do textual classification in three different ways we could look at the mineral mineralogy of the rock and in this case we use two most abundant minerals as prefix to the uh, type of texture of that particular rock example of that uh, for instance is quartzo feldspathic schist which is essentially a schist uh, and two of the most abundant mineral in that kind of schist is quartzite and feldspars. Uh, then we could have chemical chemical textures, a chemical uh, chemical textural classification. Example of that is talc magnesium schist. Uh, in some cases, classification of metamorphic rock includes uh, which actually do not change much from the protolith from the texture of the protolith in in that case we use the prefix meta to the type of rock that is com that composes the protolith and example of this type of rock is uh, this type of classification is meta granite in which the protolith was of granitic uh, rock and there was slight alteration because of the metamorphic process and what we end up with is meta granite. Engineering issues uh, of uh, metamorphic rocks includes schistosity and or foliation really and that leads to anisotropic strength development and hydraulic properties and often this type of rock exhibit creep behavior uh, and this actually leads to many landslide events. Economic use of metamorphic rocks, metamorphic rocks are, is, a, is a very major source of uh, uh, rare metal ores such as tungsten and gold which we have already discussed a little bit. It also is a rich source of precious and semi precious stones. Schist, uh, mar schist and marble are used as building material and gneiss is also used as building material. Uh, to summarize this lesson, we looked at the different types of metamorphism, what are the agents that uh, causes metamorphism, lists of different types of engineering issues we considered uh, involving metamorphic rocks we looked at different types and grades of metamorphism and uh, 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 what are the economic uses of different types of metamorphic rocks that also were considered in this lesson. We finally wrap this lesson up by, uh, by a question set. The first question is what are grades of metamorphism? The second one is which type of metamorphism is caused by high temperature and pressure uh, that affects a very large volume of rock, pre-existing rock. The third question that I ask is which rock is formed by metamorphosing limestone? And the fourth one I asked you, ask you to explain a few terms, metasomatism, uh, aureole and shock metamorphism and uh, you try to answer these questions at your leisure and uh, when we meet in the next lesson, I am going to provide you with the answers.